Hello students, in the previous lecture, we studied metastable state and population inversion, which are the necessary conditions for laser action to happen. Now, in this lecture, we will understand how population inversion is achieved in a laser with the help of various pumping techniques. A very important question that is asked is what is pumping? How can we achieve population inversion in the lab and compare optical pumping with electrical pumping? So let us begin. See, lasers can be divided into groups according to the different criteria of their active medium. That means they can be solid, liquid, gaseous, or plasma and uh, they can be continuous wave lasers like gaseous lasers helium neon or pulsed wave like ruby laser but every laser should be having a pumping system pumping will basically make the atoms in the excited state more compared to the ground state which is a necessary condition for laser to happen. So the process of achieving the population inversion in the medium is called pumping action. It is the essential requirement for producing a laser beam. There are many techniques available for pumping method. Pump Pumping is basically you are pulling up something from the ground state to the excited state through laboratory techniques. So the most common used pumping techniques are optical pumping where you will be doing the excitation by photons, electrical discharge method, direct conversion, inelastic atom to atom collision between atoms so that atoms don't go to the ground state but always stay in the excited state. Optical pumping is most important and this is asked a lot in the exam. Optical pumping, it is the process of excitation of a medium with light or with electromagnetic radiations which are absorbed in the active medium to electromagnetic radiation photons which are absorbed in the active medium to populate certain higher energy levels. And optical pumping is used in laders to fulfill the criteria of population inversion and most common optical pump lasers are the insulator solid state lasers. Optical pumping is the only way to supply the laser active ions and with energy because of the reason that most of the medium is electrically insulating. Common lasers which are using optical pumping are ruby laser, neodymium, yttrium, aluminium garnet laser, the glass laser and the dye laser. What are the requirements for the pump light? The optical spectrum of the pump light must be suitable. All the photons should have proper energy. The pump intensity should be sufficiently high. Pump beam quality should be high. Intensity noise of the pump source should be as small as possible and pump light should have suitable polarization state. Types of optical pump sources are the discharge lamp, laser diodes and other few types of lasers. So discharge lamp, there are three main types of optical discharge lamps. The flash lamp or the halogen flash tube, arc lamp or halogen arc lamp, incandescent lamps. So depending on the type of laser output required, there are different methods of pumping the laser cavity. The flash lamps are generally used for pulsed laser output, while arc lamps and incandescent lamps are used when the laser output required is a continuous wave one. Flash lamp or halogen flash tube. Flash lamps produce pump pulses for either pre or Q switched lasers. 
flash lamp is consisting of, as you can see here in the diagram, a glass filled tube with some gas like krypton and having metallic electrodes, the cathode and anode. The shape of the flash lamp electrodes are in general rounded cathode, usually having electrode separation between 5 and 15 centimeters. So this is a linear design. The arc length and diameter are usually taken in this. This is a xenon flash lamp which is used. It is a, a helix design of flash lamp in which flash tubes are coiled in the helix and the lasing rod is placed within the helix. They are commonly used in ruby laser also. Arc lamps, here the lamps produce light by an electric arc and are optimized for continuous wave operation. The arc lamp consists of a glass tube. As you can see here, it is filled with some gas and one metallic electrode which is made of tungsten. The type of lamp is often named by the gas which you are going to fill in the tube. Suppose it is a xenon uh, gas you are filling or a krypton gas you are filling. So arc lamps produce high radiation in the ultraviolet and visible region of the spectrum. Arc lamps produced highest irradiation on small targets and intense collimated beams. <coughs> These arc lamps used for laser pumping have electrodes of different shape. Now, due to very high power requirement, an arrangement of water cooling is done to cool such lamps. You can keep ruby laser in mind when you are studying these sources. Incandescent lamps, these lamps have a continuous emission because of which it is easy to see that part of the emission that coincides with the absorption spectra and hence can be used as an optical pump. What are the advantages of optical pumping or the lamp pumping very high pump power is generated price per watt of generated pump power is very lower these lamps are immune to voltage fluctuations the disadvantage is that their lifetime is very small electricity consumption is very high and lamp pumps have low lamp pump brightness. Now in replacing this and obviously they always require a cooling system. If you remember this was one drawback of ruby laser also that it required a cooling system. Diode pumped lasers. See diode pump lasers give a continuous wave output. They are pumped by high power laser diodes. You can see here in this diagram and diode laser pumping is basically coming out in many forms to stabilize the laser frequency diode lasers are cooled by thermoelectric cooler and they do not really require a cooling system. Lasers using diode lasers are the neodymium doped yttrium aluminium garnet laser, the yttrium uh, YAG laser etc. Now this question has been asked many number of times where you have been asked to compare the pumping action of diode laser and the lamp pumping. So see, diode laser pumping efficiency is high, lamp pumping efficiency is low. Diode laser low diffraction losses, lamp pumping high diffraction losses. Diode laser production is easier, lamp pumping production Production is very difficult. Peak power achieved in diode laser is less, but in lamp pumping it is high. Cooling demands are reduced in diode laser, whereas they are very high in lamp pumping lasers. Next lecture, we will continue with the electrical pumping 